Hello, hello. All right, so back with another live. Um, today, I am really excited to talk about something that I've been building us up to over the last forever that I've been talking. Um, and that is that we are a product of our upbringing. We are a product of our culture. We are a product of so many things. And because of this, our behaviors, our way that we cope, our way that we scapegoat, our ways that we self-sabotage, our habits, our thought patterns, our perceptions, our ways of being didn't start with us, okay? And the reason that this is such an important thing for us to recognize and to realize is because we are all, if you're watching these videos, if you watch my content, if you're at all interested in anything that I'm talking about, we are a group of people who are interested in developing our consciousness. We're interested in developing and growing and evolving as a human, okay? And even being at a place where any of these things that we're talking about are of interest to you or are of something that is on your mind, something that is on your heart, something that is in your consciousness, in your perspective, means that you're at a specific place in your evolutionary path that is different than the mainstream, than where most people are at. And that, again, is going to be at least partially a result of your upbringing, of where you were born, of how you were born, of uh, your, the culture you were in, the family you were in, all right? Your genetic material that you were born into. And this can even be something where people um, go into believing in past lives and that your soul has carried on from another life because you clearly have an understanding and, and a way of being and, a, and just a cognition that seems to be higher level than other people and that you may have just been born that way. And, and again, so I'm not here to make an argument for any of that. All I'm here to say is that when we're looking at our behaviors, when we're looking at our scapegoats, our codependencies, our ways of being, that seem to be destructive to us, that seem to be destructive to society. And we look out at culture, we look out at society and see ways of being that are destructive to self, destructive to each other. We have to stop looking at these things as though they're occurring in a vacuum. We have to stop looking at these things as though you popped in to life in a vacuum, completely without being affected by anyone around you, without being affected by your family, without being affected by your culture, that you had logic and understanding and awareness, full cognitive capacity, and that you understood how everything worked and you just decided to go off path and cause yourself pain. Because if we really come down to it, and if we really look at how most self-help and spirituality approach our problems, right? Because again, why do we come to spirituality? Why do all of us come to self-help and self-improvement? We come because two reasons. We have an awareness of our own pain we have an awareness of there's something wrong. We have anxiety, we have depression, we have existential crises. We have this awareness of our own death, this awareness of our own mortality. And for a lot of us who come to spirituality in the way that I speak about it, religion and superstition and new age doesn't fill the void, right? It doesn't explain it for us. 
we, we can't just say, oh, Christianity, that's the answer. And that's how I explain life. And it takes away all of my cognitive bias and, or all of my cognitive dissonance and settles me at night so I can just sleep. And all of those people who don't believe in Christianity are just wrong. You know, we, we are coming to this and we're saying, okay, well, there's something more complicated going on. The, these simple answers aren't fulfilling us. So there's that, right? There's the pain and the existential awareness and the existential crisis. And then the second thing is that we have an awareness that there's more to us. There's more for us to become, to evolve into, that we're not done here, that there's something to seek. And again, rather than being in the world and being a part of culture and saying, okay, so that thing that we should be seeking is money, success, relationships, fame, a perfect career, the perfect body. We can go after these things and we can do these things and it tends to become very disordered when we do, right? We, 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 we seek money to an extreme. We seek the body to an extreme. We seek the relationship to an extreme and it becomes all consuming. Whereas it looks like people in kind of normal society can sort of go after these things and like want a career and want a relationship and want the body or whatever. But there's not this like extreme nature that comes along with it. That they, they, they tend to just kind of like sort of do it and they sort of want it and they sort of go for it. But when people who listen to this kind of work get into these things, it becomes this like all consuming, like takes over your life, we become obsessive. Because we're seeking. And the culture isn't fulfilling the role, isn't fulfilling the need, the way that it does for others, right? That the, the level of satisfaction we get from the career high is like nothing compared to what other people seem to get out of it. And so we're coming to self-help and we're coming to spirituality because we have an awareness of our pain. We have an awareness that there's something we can do about it and we don't know what that is. And we're seeking and searching for those answers. We have this existential awareness. We have this like, what's going on? What are we gonna do after we die? I am mortal, we're struggling with these things. And again, the conventional religion and the conventional spirituality of the culture isn't serving the need, isn't, isn't filling the hole. And then the second, the third thing, I guess, is the, there's more to me. There's more to life. And I don't know what it is. And when I try to fit myself again into the boxes of culture, which is put it on my career, put it on my body, put it on my relationship, put it on my financial status, put it on my popularity, it becomes this all-consuming obsession because we keep going after these things and expecting them to fill and expecting them that like, no, like this has to be it because what else is there, right? If this isn't it, then I don't know what it is and it isn't it. And so we just keep going and we just think, well, maybe more, right? Like the better body, the better body, the better, more extreme, more extreme, more extreme health, more extreme, more extreme, more extreme. And we just go until we water fast ourselves to death or we, we work so hard and we're like building the business and building the business and building the business. And then we just explode, right? It, it's the, the obsession becomes so much because again, there's something more that we're not seeing that we're not getting. And we just keep trying to fill that void with the stuff of culture and it doesn't work the way that it works for other people. And again, so we need to understand fundamentally that the fact that that is occurring for you means that you are at a different level of awareness. You're at a different level on your evolutionary path than the average person. Okay, now, if we can start to understand, again, that we as human beings 
all human beings, no matter where you are on your evolutionary path, because we are all on different places on our evolutionary path. We are all at different places in our consciousness and our awareness and what this does to us, we need to understand. Okay. So the first thing where you are on your path, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are on your path. Every human being is seeking pleasure. Every human being is seeking pleasure. Now, why are we seeking pleasure? There is absolutely nothing wrong with the fact that we are seeking pleasure. Okay. The reason we are seeking pleasure is because as a living biological being, there has to be a feedback mechanism for that, which serves our growth and that, which is antagonistic to our growth. If we didn't have that, okay. If we didn't have any feedback that something was killing us versus something is nourishing us, we would not survive. Life could not survive. Okay. So we need to understand that there's absolutely nothing fundamentally wrong with a feedback mechanism that says this feels good. This feels bad. That's s as simple as we can boil it down to as the feedback mechanism of reality speaking to us. That which feels good is that which serves our growth. That which feels bad is that which is antagonistic to our growth. Now this gets complicated. Okay. So that's, that's the most simple roots. Okay. So again, you being a pleasure seeker didn't start with you. It's not something wrong with you. It's not something unique to you. That's something you inherited as being someone who's living in a physical body on this planet earth. So that's that first thing. Spirituality. There are so many spiritual teachings out there that make it like there's something wrong with you as an individual that you seek pleasure and try to avoid pain. And that's a ridiculous statement because again, you didn't invent that. You didn't make that up. That comes from biology, all life on this planet is seeking pleasure and trying to avoid pain. Because like I say, in the most simple, when we are having a direct relationship with reality, when we are having a direct relationship with reality, which most of us are not, because again, second thing that we'll talk about in a second, when you're having a direct relationship with reality, that which brings you pleasure, is going to be that which serves your growth. That which causes you pain is letting you know that something there is antagonistic. There's a challenge. There's a struggle. Okay. Because we are complex beings. So that first thing that did not start with you. The fact that you seek pleasure and that you run from pain is completely natural. Didn't start with you. You're not going to get rid of that. Okay. Okay. Here's what we can understand. If we can understand that fact and we don't go into the delusion that we can somehow as a human being transcend our desire for pleasure and our want to get away from pain. We're never going to transcend that. We don't transcend that. That's biology. However, everything can be and will be evolved. So here, your relationship with pain and pleasure is going to be very different based on where you are in your consciousness journey. Okay. So it doesn't matter where you are on your consciousness journey, pain and pleasure are your feedback mechanism. However, your relationship with pain and pleasure, how you interact with pain and pleasure, how you understand pain and pleasure, 
the way that you use pain and pleasure in your life is going to be very different based on where you are on your evolutionary path. All right? So as high consciousness beings, because that's just who I talk to, right? Like this isn't, this material just simply isn't for the fundamental religious person. It, it, it's not going to make sense. And that's okay. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I'm speaking to the people who, like I say, are coming to this work because your culture and your society and the spirituality that you're being fed in the mainstream, like the new age stuff, the stuff that's seemingly leading edge, right? The people who are channeling aliens and all this stuff, it's not resonating with you. That's who I'm talking to. So because you're at that place, what you can understand is this, that again, you were born into a world, into a body that is human. Okay. You were born into a human body and humans, the way that we have evolved over the entire course of human history is that our survival is no longer a simple one-to-one -one relationship with reality, right? We are not individuals living in the jungle, having a one-to-one -one relationship with nature. We're just not. We live in a collective. We survive in so, so, so many ways because of how we work together, because of culture, because of society. And so again, remember I've talked so much about childhood trauma and the childhood trauma being where our first pain and pleasure mechanisms, wires, start to get crossed. Because again, in our childhoods, so again, please understand this. You had a very specific childhood. You had a childhood body, a childhood mind, a childhood nervous system. So who you are right now, as an adult, you did not pop into your adulthood neutral or understanding reality or having a blank perspective, a blank perception, a completely neutral, unbiased way of looking at the world that you then collected unbiased information and now you have your worldview and now you have your ways of being and now you have your habits and patterns and it all just started with you in your adulthood. Okay, again, second thing that spirituality and self-help they start off on the wrong foot immediately because essentially what they are saying, when you really listen to what spirituality and self-help are teaching, it sounds to you, it sounds to me like you are the way you are because there's something wrong with your perception. You are the way you are because you believed false things. You are the way you are because you lack self-love. You are the way you are because this, this, and this deficiency in you. No. <laughs> you are the way you are because you were born into a specific family that had specific rules for how it thought reality worked, that your family has inherited and passed down and passed down and passed down and passed down over the generations, that they got from society at large, as society was evolving, having all these different experiences, interpreting them through bias, interpreting them through misunderstanding. Like if any of you have ever played the game telephone, right? Where the message starts at the first person and you whisper it into the ear of the person next to you and they whisper it to the person next to them and then, 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 and as many as you get, if there's like 20 students or 30 people, whatever, 
By the time you get to the last person, usually the message is like completely scrambled from the time where it started. Why? Because perception, because bias, because the things that we hear and the things that we speak, we do not communicate clearly. And then, like I say, we have been having experiences as a humanity from biased perspectives, from limited perspectives. See now, everything that we know as a current society is based on the understandings of the people that came before us, who naturally had a less evolved consciousness than us because their experiences were less than us. We have naturally more perspective. Just being born in the 21st century with access to a computer and access to education. You were born into a situation where your perspective, your vantage point was going to be much broader than someone born in Africa who doesn't get to be literate and doesn't get to go to school and literally knows nothing outside of their tribe. So that's the first thing, right? Again, your consciousness level, your perception of the world, your bias, your experiences, how many perspectives you have been exposed to didn't start with you. You were born into that. And so where you are at in your consciousness didn't start with you. It started with however you were born, whatever you were born into, all of these things that were passed down into your family. So again, and then you were a child who did not have your prefrontal cortex completely developed and evolved. You did not have logic and reason. You did not have awareness of your surroundings and why everything was happening so that you could make clear, unbiased decisions about how reality worked and what was right and wrong and what was good and bad and what was even happening in order to build your worldview off of. No. You had childhood understanding, which was very limited to that which pleases my caregivers, who are absolutely the source of all things, helps me survive because they provide for me everything I need. If they are disapproving of me, they may not give me what I need, then I die. And you did not cognitively think about this. Okay, so even now today, when you are so afraid of rejection, when you start to get into your nervous system and you're doing your processing work and you're noticing how anxiety ridden you are when you think someone doesn't like you, when you think someone's gonna disapprove of you, how many things in your mind you will not let yourself consider about yourself. You will not ever say, well, if that, like, the, how many things inside of you that you think, if this is a part of me, I have to get rid of it because it's fundamentally bad. There's absolutely no way that this thing could ever be good. There's absolutely no way that I could express this thing and be okay. Like, when you start to get into your nervous system, you're going to see how illogical and unreasonable and unrational, irrational to your adult perspective. So many of your behaviors are. So many of your thought patterns are. And that's already like a pretty far down the rabbit hole of consciousness expansion. Most of us have our anxieties, have of our depressions, have our parts of self we are rejecting and don't even see that that's because of conditioning. We don't even see that that might be because of the biases of our family and the biases of our culture that has nothing to do with reality. We don't even see that. We just think, no, that's definitely true. That's how it is. That's reality. We don't even see that we were programmed. We don't even see. And so that programming that we inherited 
in our childhoods evolved to be our perception, right? So that which pleased our caregivers and did not please our caregivers started to become, like I say, no one lacks self-love. Why? Because every part of you that you hate, every bad habit that you have, every self-sabotage, every way you cope was born from your desire to survive. You're looking for pleasure. Why? Because if how you are as a natural human being, the you that is in your blueprint, in your DNA, in your genetics, in your chart, whatever, however you want to define the you that exists, if whatever about that and also your evolutionary path, your growth path, the things you needed to experience and experiment with and do in order to learn how reality worked. Those two things, the real things about you and the things about your learning path that your caregivers rejected, who were your source of everything, right? You were not interacting with nature. You were not interacting with reality. Your survival was fundamentally based on how your caregivers perceived you in your little mind, right? You couldn't tell that mommy could be mad at me and still give me food. You didn't know that. You didn't have reasoning for that. Her rejection of you was absolutely the end of the world to your nervous system. You did not have a prefrontal cortex. So again, this wasn't logical. You didn't think this through. This was a programmed survival response that got programmed into your primitive physiology that's still running the show today that you have applied logic to. So any part of you that got you rejected started to become a part of you that you rejected. Okay? You hate these parts of you because they were an existential threat to you in your family because you were a part of a family. You cope, you scapegoat, you self-sabotage because you're trying to live a life that was dictated to you. This is how you get approval. And approval is equal to survival, which is equal to pleasure. Approval equals pleasure because that is how we were evolved. That is where you came from. That is how life was. You were not capable of meeting your own needs. You were not capable of providing for yourself. You were not capable of understanding how the world worked. You were being programmed by your caregivers and the community around your caregivers. Because this is the next thing. The culture that influenced your caregivers wasn't connected to reality. It was connected to culture. It was connected to society. The things your caregivers believed were good and bad came from their parents and their parents and their parents. And where did that come from? Society at large. Because again, we are not individuals interacting with reality out in the forest on our own. We survive as a collective. So the more the collective values what you produce, right? This is where hustle culture comes from. This is where we completely naturally came into believing that our productivity and what we produce and what we do is our value. Because absolutely true for hundreds of millions of years. <laughs> the people that produced what the culture valued, what helped the culture survive. So back in hunter gatherer times, where did toxic masculinity come from? Well, back in the day when survival was completely based on how can we dominate nature? because nature was very antagonistic to the human survival. We were born 
very unprepared to be in the wild. The human body is ridiculously unset up to survive, right? Blunt teeth, blunt nails, like our bone structure doesn't even really work. Like standing up is like, we survived for a really long time because we had strong male bodies that could hunt animals and defend us from other tribes and build stuff. They were the dominant members of our species because they provided the most resource for us to survive. It just was what it was. We didn't have technology. We didn't have all of the things that we had. Women in physiologically, biologically woman bodies had periods. We were genetically weaker. We would get pregnant. Like there was nothing more vulnerable out in the wild than a woman with a baby. Like think of how hard it would be for her to provide for herself. Think of how hard it would be for her to, to defend herself. She needed a male, a strong male, to get her food, to get her water, to build her shelter, to defend her. So again, to think that we just popped into the 21st century and all of these men who dominate everything are just like assholes and we just came on this for no reason. No, of course not. Hustle culture and what you produce and how much you feed the system came naturally. Because again, of course, why wouldn't we have valued the people who provided the most for the group over the people who provided the least when survival was the thing? Of course we did that. That was an evolutionary step. And then as we built technologies and as we built these things, now who do we value in society? People who are good at technology. Why? Because they provide our needs for us. The people who are building computers and machines and mechanizing things and all of these, making life easier, making, redistribu uh, making dis distribution of resources easier, making living easier. We value them. So they have all the money and all the resources, partially because they provide something that we value. And then yes, they have used that, they have taken that advantage, and they have used it for their own gain. And I'm not trying to make a moral judgment on any of it. All I'm trying to say is, please understand that nothing that we exist within just popped up out of nowhere to be out of alignment. Everything evolved very naturally as our consciousness has been evolving. And so again, as higher level beings, higher awareness people who listen to my work, we can't judge ourselves like, What's wrong with me that I am this way? Why am I so addicted to approval? Why am I so addicted to false pleasure? Why do I keep chasing these things that are never gonna satisfy me? What's wrong with me? Nothing. You're programmed, you're part of a culture. It is hard to transcend all of those things. That's number one. And number two, we can't look at culture and be like, what the frick is wrong with everyone? Cause they're not where you are. There's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with anyone. Everyone is acting from what they think, what they feel is pleasure. And we have, like I said, gotten our wires crossed about what pleasure is. We are disconnected from reality in a lot of ways. Humans have never understood ourselves. Humans have never known what we needed. And then the next thing, right? That as you evolve, your needs, the things that hurt you, 
the things that you feel, that you have an awareness of, are going to be different than the things that people at other stages of evolution need. Where you are on your consciousness journey, the higher you go in awareness, the more pain you are going to feel at the hot, at more things because your needs as a higher evolutionary person are greater. The things you need to satisfy the complexity of where you are at are greater than the things that the people who are at a lower level of complexity need, right? So, so many of us in the new age movement, spirituality, look at people who are fundamentally religious and we just think, how can that be satisfying? How can you just be a Muslim or be a Christian and like fully think that that's the only spirituality and that everything else is wrong and no other perspective exists and every other perspective is stupid? How can you be a Republican? and just think that you're deserving of guns and birth control and the whole point is f to get money. How can you just have that perspective? How can you just do that? Because their vantage point for the things that they're seeing and the things that they're feeling and what they need to feel like they're being nourished is at a lower level than you. It's the exact same thing in grade school. The difference between the curriculum of grade one to grade two, like the amount of different information from grade one to grade two is not that much. Grade two is essentially a repeat of grade one with a little bit more, right? Because what it takes to evolve from a lower level to a slightly higher level is not that much. And what a grade one student can handle in the way of reality, learning math, learning science, learning language, is very primitive. So what it takes to satisfy their brain, to satisfy their need for evolution, is not that much. A child is satisfied with a lot less than someone who's in a PhD. Now think about again, think about the gap between the information taught in grade 12 and the information taught in first year university. How much more information you get when you go grade 12 calculus to your first year university calculus course, right? Most first year university students are like completely overwhelmed with the just sheer volume of information you get. That's so much more complex than what you got in high school. And that's because at higher levels, what is required for evolution is a much more complex view of reality. Our evolution happens in orders of magnitude, right? You start with two sticks and then you double that, you have four. You double that again, now you have eight. So before you added two sticks when you doubled it, now you added four sticks when you double it, you see? And then you double it again, now you have 16. You've added eight sticks, do you see? Every time we go out, what is required to evolve us is so much more than what was required to evolve us at the last stage. So by the time you're at the level of consciousness where nothing in society satisfies you, you're in a conundrum, but you are also a result. You are a result of your family. You're a result of your culture. You're a result of this world. You, and you've gotten to a point where, again, your pain and your pleasure is different than the pain and the pleasure 
of Joe and Sue down the road who are fully just living their Christian housewife life. And that's their consciousness. And that's what's enough for them. They don't feel what you feel. They don't see what you see. They don't know what you know. Not because they're lacking something. Not because they're broken. Because that's where they're at. They are a result of their upbringing. They are a result of their biology. They are a result of their conditioning. They are a result of their culture. So we have nature and nurture that's all being mixed together. to create where we are as a human being. So again, a lot of us are coming to spirituality and we're acting like we exist in a vacuum. That our anxieties, our depressions, our fears, our needs, our wants, our perceptions, that we just have them. No, you inherited that, okay? And the misunderstandings you have about yourself and the misunderstandings you have about reality and where you think you lack self-love or lack discipline or lack awareness, you inherited that. Okay, there's a story I want to tell. And it's, I don't remember where I heard it, but it's a good one. And now I'm going to change it a little <laughs> to not offend my vegan friends. So it's a story of this. A little girl is cooking with her mom and they're making sweet potatoes. I'm going to say it's sweet potatoes now. And the mom cuts the ends off the sweet potatoes before she puts them in the roasting pan. And the girl asks, why do we cut the ends off the sweet potatoes before we put them in the roasting pan? And she says, you know, I don't actually know. It's just the way my mom taught me. You're going to have to go ask grandma. So the little girl goes ask grandma, grandma, why do we cut the ends off the sweet potatoes when we cook them? before we put them in the pan. And grandma says, you know, I've never thought about it. That's just the way my mom taught me. You're gonna have to go ask your great grandma. So she gets on the phone, calls great grandma. Hey, great grandma, I'm just wondering, mom's teaching me how to make sweet potatoes and she cuts the ends off the sweet potatoes before she puts them in the roasting pan. Why do we do that? And she says, oh, it's because the pan was too small. because the pan was too small. Okay? That. Please understand that so much of your perception of what is right and wrong, what is good and bad, what is true and false, came from that. You were indoctrinated by your mother and father who were indoctrinated by their mother and father who were indoctrinated by their mother and father who maybe had a reason to do what they were doing in their context. Because again, remember, that which was required for survival for your grandparents, because again, okay, let's back up again. Where do all these rules come from? All this conditioning. It comes from our current understanding of what will enable us to survive the best within the culture we live in. Because again, we are not interacting with reality. We are interacting and surviving within a culture. We are humanity, a human race that survives together. So what your grandparents experienced as something that gets them rejected, something that is not helpful for them to survive, a way of being that gets them nowhere, that gets them maybe less than somewhere. Gets them ostracized, gets them kicked out, gets them a, a way of being that's just not practical. They pass that to their children. Don't be that way, right? That's bad, that's wrong. And all of our rules for what's good and bad, right and wrong, are always gonna come from what we believe in our current reality to be what is going to make us survive. And again, this is going to be complicated because that's going to be based on our nervous systems that were programmed by people who lived in a world that doesn't exist anymore. 
case of what your grandparents passed, your great grandparents passed to your grandparents, was already old news by the time they passed it to your grandparents. The world had changed. So the things that they were rejecting in your grandparents, the things that your nervous systems, the, the nervous systems of your grandparents were rejecting about themselves, was already based on the worldview of your great grandparents that wasn't the world anymore. So your grandparents started to hate and fear themselves and then have to navigate the society that they were in that their parents didn't really understand. They couldn't actually prepare them for the world that they were going to step into because the world had changed by then. By the time your grandparents were in their 20s and stepping out into the world and into culture outside of the umbrella of what your grand, great grandparents provided for them, what the rules were in their house and what the rules were in real society were different. So their nervous systems were at war with, do I be my real self? Do I be what culture is calling me to be? Or do I follow my nervous system, which wants to do what my parents told me to do? Because that was survival in my childhood. But now it's counter to my survival in society, which might be counter to my survival as an actual individual that doesn't fit into society. So they pass that on to your grandparents. Your grandparents passed what they knew about their experiences of life and the things that they had grown into and the things that they had seen and transcended about their, their parents' view to your parents. Same thing. That world had already gone. What they were passing on to your parents as right and wrong, good and bad, what they're allowed to do, what they're not allowed to do, what's worked in the childhood home, what was survival for your parents to their nervous systems, but then by the time they stepped out into the world, that world was dead. That world had evolved. It was gone and different. And so now their nervous systems were at war. What's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad? So then we have the whole transcendental, everyone's smoking weed, everyone's getting high, everyone's going to India. We're seeing this consciousness revolution. Oh, maybe slavery isn't good. Maybe we should stop some of these things. Maybe racism isn't great. Okay, but again, why? Why were, why were they even able to start questioning that stuff? Because of the society they were born into. Because in order to keep going, in order to keep evolving, we needed to become a global society in order to continue to accumulate wealth, accumulate resources. We couldn't stay countries. We couldn't stay tribes. We had to start to work together. So this whole, the old idea that that tribe is a threat to me because they're going to come and take my stuff. They're going to take my women. They're going to bring a disease and then wipe out my whole tribe. Where did these things come from? We had that naturally. And then we got to a place where we had medicine and sanitation and realized that if we just keep pillaging all the resources in our one little place, we're going to lose all of them. So maybe we need to like work together. So the consciousness level was like, hey, we, we can't keep being this way. If we're going to keep evolving, if we're going to keep surviving, this isn't going to work. Okay, but the world was still not how it is now. So your parents' ideas and what, what it took to survive in society for your parents, very different than what it takes to survive in society today. And again, the difference from generation to generation is increasing exponentially. So what your parents programmed into you was right and wrong. Get a house, get a job, get a mortgage, have kids, security, stability, Anything that's creative or not productive or is a threat to your survival, that's bad. Don't be that way. Anything that questions the fundamental religion, anything that questions the fundamental views, wrong, bad. Don't, don't ask those complicated questions. Don't think you could travel. Don't be irresponsible. So now, 
us stepping into a world that requires these things. Stability doesn't exist anymore. That's like not a freaking thing. If you're looking for that, you're not going to survive. Because this world is completely now based on innovation. Culture now demands what? Evolution. Technological advancement. High touch. Emotion. Awareness. This is where we're at. So the things that our parents indoctrinated into us, for most of us, as being good, bad, right, and wrong, completely counter to what's going to help society evolve. But we're at war with ourselves. Why? Because these parts of self that are going to help us survive in the real world, that are going to help humanity evolve in an actual way with real reality, go against the structures that society currently has, the world views of the people who came before us, who provided for us everything we needed when we could not provide for ourselves. They indoctrinated us as this is what is right and this is what is wrong and this is how reality works. And it's not. But again, we didn't use our logic and our reasoning to say, oh, mom and dad just see the world this way because that's how it was for them, but that's not how it is for me. That's not how it is anymore. Reality, as we progress, requires more and more of us, requires different things. Evolution is naturally happening. And if we want to keep surviving as a human race, we have to keep evolving. We can't stay in the primitive tribal jungle, purple. OK, so I'm going to give you another link in a second way of thinking. We wouldn't have survived that way, right? Everyone who romanticizes how we were when we were natural. No, we could not have survived as a primitive society. We never, we would have been stuck where we were. We would have used all the resources and then every tribe would have died out. We would have stayed racist and slave owning because that's how those tribes survive. They still do that today. Primitive tribes are communing with nature because they have to, because nature is their god, because they don't have technology, they don't have science, they don't have understanding. And that's good in some ways, but also detrimental in others. They all die when they're 40. They don't live long enough to get chronic disease. We don't know what diets are actually good from them because they don't live long enough to know. Stop. We have to stop romanticizing the past because it's not true. We have to evolve. So again, you did not start with you. Your traumas did not start with you. Your perceptions of reality and what is good and bad and right or wrong did not start with you. What real reality is asking from you, what you need to feel good. So the things that make you feel anxiety and depression that don't bother your parents, that don't bother the rest of society, it's not because there's something wrong with you. It's because your consciousness level is higher. You are aware of more physically, mentally, emotionally. What you, you know what you need in order to align with real reality is beyond what society is saying is required for survival. So this is why, yes, we live in a, in a culture of humans working together. But when you start to evolve past your culture, don't be afraid that you won't survive. Because there's something that happens where you start to really embrace who and what you actually are. And society may not value that very much. Like me. <laughs> there's a lot of things about me society does not value. I don't really work in the system, yet I am being provided for. And there's something about that. And yes, I'm privileged. I was born into a privileged situation, but that's part of why I have the higher consciousness that I have. Right? I don't have it just because I was, like if I had been born into a completely war-torn, oppressive, non, didn't get to get an education society, I would be a very different person. 
I would be a very different awareness. I may be higher than that culture. Maybe I'd be the most, like, have a much higher awareness than what I was born into, but I wouldn't be where I am now. So part of the reason that I am even able to figure out who and what I really am, whether that revolves around the context of society or not, and then able to survive, is absolutely luck of the draw or whatever you want to believe. But like, again, I don't have the awareness that I have simply because I popped into it. I'm standing on the shoulders of everyone who came before me. The resources that I had are the reason I am able to be this way. But so what I want to say is like, if you are in this situation, you going after and, and deprogramming yourself and realizing that so many of the things that you hate about yourself, everything, you, all your scapegoats, all your self-sabotage, all your traumas, none of it is your fault. None of it started with you. All of it is something you need to question and you need to develop your true relationship with real reality. So again, that's the emotional mastery series. That's my mystery school. It's you starting to untangle what the programming is so that you can have an, an interaction with real reality. And then yes, that's going to take you out of culture. Yes, that's going to take you out of society. Yes, it's going to make it so that you're different. But reality is going to take care of you. Just, it's complicated. And no one's going to be able to tell you how you should live. This is why I don't tell you what to eat. I don't tell you where you should live. I don't tell you you should be a minimalist. I don't tell you any of that stuff. I want you to figure that out. Because only you know from your place and your vantage point, your evolution, what is the next right step for you. So the next resource I want to give you is go watch the Spiral Dynamics video from Leo at actualize.org. I've put a link everywhere you're watching this. This will explain to you so much about why humans are so different, why your consciousness is different than others, and how you are not the first person to be where you are, how every single generation has to unprogram and unlearn the survival rules that their caregivers gave them in their childhood where that is what was required for survival. It doesn't match what, what is required for survival out there. Why are we are so addicted to pleasure? Because pleasure is supposed to mean we're growing. And now we have all this fake pleasure. We, we do. And we have to sort through that. So like going in the wilderness and fasting and getting off Netflix and doing all these things because you need to start to realize what real pleasure is. And so you have to get off the fake pleasure. And you have to let yourself go through the ego death of not being approved of, of letting yourself disappoint people, make people mad, do all these things that you're... You, you've been told you're never allowed to do, do all the, not do all the things you're supposed to do and reprogram your nervous system that you don't die. It's hard. You evolve to be able to see other vantage points than your own, other perspectives. That's not available at every level. The fundamental religious person can't see another perspective the way that you can. So stop expecting it from them. Expect it from yourself. Evolve yourself. Stop thinking that this all started with you, that anything started with you. It didn't. Look into your history. Look into your past. This is how you're going to understand what is right and wrong and good and bad and where it all came from. You don't have to cut the ends off your sweet potatoes anymore. You have a big pan now, but you've got to recognize that. So all these things that you think are wrong with you, all of these fears, all of these, I'm going to get rejected, I'm going to die. Look at that. Where did that come from? Watch the Spiral Dynamics video. Come join the Mystery School. Do the Emotional Mastery Series. Work on this. It didn't start with you. Stop acting like you live in a bubble. Because you don't. Okay? So that's that. Nothing started with you. You need to love every part of yourself. Because that's how you're going to just figure out what real pain and real pleasure is. And then from there, you're going to find truth. Okay?